For a time of new beginnings and change, Germany was in the process of reinventing itself and Ferdinand Porsche had recently opened his sports car plant, which to this day embodies the fascination and legend of Porsche at one and the same time. The latest example, the new Porsche 718 Cayman. And with that, I would like to welcome you to our digital press conference. Although the word digital was completely unknown back in the 1950s, the number 718 was definitely familiar to motorsport fans. Le Mans, Sebring, the Targa Florio. The Porsche 718 enjoyed great success at these legendary races in the 50s and 60s. It was characterized by having two doors and a high-revving four-cylinder boxer engine. It was the epitome of compact and high-performance mid-engine sports cars. The new 718 Cayman remains true to its tradition. Not only is it visually a legitimate heir, but its performance is also exceptional. Join us for a ride into the realm of a magic number, 718. The 718 was the four-cylinder boxer engine sports car in the late 50s. And especially at the end of 1961, a coupe version, the 718 GTR, which was established at that time, which then took part in the 1962 Le Mans 24-hour race quite successfully. This illustrated quite well that this car did indeed exist, both as a convertible version as well as a coupe version. And the same is true again today, with a Boxster as a convertible and the Cayman as a coupe. An excellent match. They have the same engines, the same mid-engine layout, and that fits extremely well in the current combination. The 718 was obviously the source of inspiration for the new 718 Cayman and the Boxster. That starts with the design. We have this typical mid-engine design, these proportions, the shape, that simply show us the historic 718 is the forebear of today's cars. And then there is, of course, the fundamental principle, this idea of perfect lightweight design, the power-to-weight ratio. It wasn't necessary for us at Porsche to have the most powerful engines, but we used the smartest technology. In this case, back in the 50s, it was this little four-cylinder engine with four camshafts, which had such good high-revving characteristics and was really powerful. I'm sure this core idea that you don't need the most powerful car with the greatest engine displacement, but the car that is the most agile has the best power-to-weight ratio and is also the most reliable is part of the essence of Porsche as a brand. With the new 718 models, we transport that essence into the present. I think design is something that always requires us to react to the current day and age. It is constantly developing, and I think that every car we make is right for its time. Talking of the 718, back then the 718 was the perfect little racing car. And for me, the new 718 is the perfect little racing car for 2016. I always say that what makes a Porsche stand out are that the driver, the vehicle, and the road are one in a certain kind of harmony. And the car transfers the driver's precise steering movements and reactions directly onto the road without body roll. It does exactly what I, as the driver, tell it to do. Lots of people tune cars in this and that, including brakes and good chassis. But it's the passion for detail and haggling to optimize the individual solutions in detail that really makes the difference in the end. And sometimes we also wonder ourselves, oh, now how did we manage to go one better yet again?
und das Fahrerlebnis wird I think the driving experience will convince anyone, thanks to its boost in performance. Particularly, the turbo engine makes it possible to achieve a palpable improvement in performance even at low engine speeds. And of course, experience in the engine's high revving capability and the typical sound of the B4 boxer engine. We offer the base model with the 2.0 liter four cylinder turbo boxer engine with 300 horsepower. That is an increase of 25 horsepower relative to its predecessor, and its maximum torque is 380 newton meters, which is 90 newton meter more than the predecessor. The Cayman S has the 2.5 liter engine with 350 horsepower and a maximum torque of 420 newton meter, which is also an increase of 25 horsepower and 50 newton meter more torque. 50 newton meter. The new 718 Cayman accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 4.7 seconds and reaches a top speed of 275 kilometers per hour. While the S accelerates from 0 to 100 in a mere 4.2 seconds and reaches a top speed of 285 kilometers per hour. Yes, the 718, the Cayman that we are pleased to present now, was intended to achieve even greater precision than its predecessor. By greater precision, we mean sharper styling, more precise styling, but also significantly improved driving characteristics and, of course, commensurate driving performance. That is all part and parcel of such a mid-engine sports car. I'd put it this way. We sent the new Cayman to the gym. Now the car seems a bit more agile, more sporty, and at the same, lighter, which was actually one of the things we had been aiming to achieve. If you look at the car from the front, the contours are sharper, clearer, and from my point of view, a bit reduced in comparison to its predecessor. Seen from the side, it all appears a bit flatter. The wings are a bit reduced in height. The roof, of course, tapers a bit faster to the back. And the rear has a more clearly defined spoiler lip, giving it a more sporty look in that area. Seen from the side, it is worth mentioning that the Cayman now also has the new wing mirrors, with the V-foot look, as we refer to it, a very sporty foot. This makes the car sportier than ever. Even when you're sitting in the car, you can see how this element has enhanced the car. A nice detail. Now at the same time, we have a new door handle on the side. Admittedly, that is only a minor detail, but often it is these small elements that give the car a more precise charm. We left the little shell elements from the 981 away, which is now a very purist outer contour of the door latch. The door handles is simply positioned nicely now. The introduction of the 718 Cayman also sees the introduction of a number of new PCM features. Amongst other things, it is now possible to link two phones, to modify your waypoints by drag and drop, and to retrieve a variety of information using the PCM Connect app, including information about the weather, car parks near your destination, and events. A Porsche is a sports car for everyday use, ideal for a Saturday afternoon drive or a tour through the Alps where the car is pure fun. But I can also endure daily traffic jams in this car. And if you do have to endure daily traffic jams, simply reeling off the routes, then the assistance systems are also very helpful, even in a sports car be it the automatic cruise control, which can now coast with improved efficiency too, or lane assist, which has been adopted from the 911. They simply offer relief to drivers. 
But we wouldn't be Porsche if we didn't offer new sporty features in addition to assistance systems like these. Be it the new sports chassis, lowering the ride by 20 millimeters, and regulated dampers now also available for the Cayman for the first time, i.e. the PASM Sport Tuning. Then there's the new GT Sport steering wheel inherited from the 918, which is 375 millimeters in diameter. On the steering wheel, if the car comes with Sport Chrono package, there is the new mode switch with the four positions familiar from the 911, which Cayman and Boxster drivers can now select too, with Sport and Sport Plus, and then an individual position in addition to the normal position, which drivers can basically customize as they wish. Do I want to activate the sport exhaust system in this mode, or drive the car with stiff dampening, or whatever? So we offer that now too. So on the one hand, we offer a balance between greater driving safety and comfort, and on the other hand, greater sporting performance. In Richtung Sportlichkeit. The chassis tuning of the new Cayman is based on that of the 718 Boxster, which was also retuned and it was adapted to the new vehicle. For the Cayman, we individually retuned the chassis based on the body stiffness characteristic. This means that we were also able to use stiffer suspension springs as well as stiffer stabilizers due to the body stiffness which improves the driving dynamics while still leaving us with adequate comfort. We were able to adopt the damping characteristics directly from the new 718 Boxster. Both the base model Cayman as well as the Cayman S are based on a conventional chassis. The PASM chassis with a 10 millimeter lower ride height is available as an initial option, and for the first time, there is also a PASM Sport chassis, which lowers the ride height by 20 millimeters. This means that the car sits closer to the ground, has a lower center of gravity, and that is, of course, an outstanding chassis when it comes to agility and sportiness, yet still offers sufficient ride comfort. This adjustable chassis gives you two chassis setups to choose from, the PASM Comfort and PASM Sport, which allow you to select the car's driving characteristic individually. Nevertheless, the adjustable damper system actively adapts the chassis characteristic, the shock absorber map to the driving situation and driving conditions. Yes, of course, there are several development stages between this and the 981. Taking our PASM chassis as an example, we introduced a new controller with more sensitivity and accuracy. We added more sensors. We fitted each wheel with a wheel level sensor. In other words, a height sensor over each wheel suspension, as well as three accelerometers, two on the front axle and one on the rear axle. With this extensive control system, it is possible to give the vehicle an individual and sporty tuning. We developed completely new tires for the 718 generation, a new generation of tires developed in cooperation with the suppliers with lots of improvements. A key focus was placed on lowering the rolling resistance as well as on reducing stopping distances. For instance, 
we were able to reduce the rolling resistance by 7% in comparison to the predecessor model, while shortening the stopping distance by about 4% with the new generation of tires. Over and above that, the new tires are also considerably better than the previous generation of tires when it comes to wet handling as well as dry handling. The new 718 Cayman has a new feature, the PSM Sport Mode. The PSM Sport Mode allows drivers with sporting ambitions to test the car to its limits and to drive it at its limits. The control thresholds are extended much further so that drivers can drive the car at its limits relatively safely. Over and above this, they have to be in full control of the vehicle and control it themselves at all times. If necessary, the PSM system is active in the background. We call this the emergency anchor. In other words, if the car reaches the BS control range, the PSM system assures vehicle stabilization. The new 718 Cayman models also feature the tried and tested PTV, or Porsche Torque Vectoring System. This system gives the driver greater agility when entering a bend. In other words, when cornering, a brake input is initiated on the wheel on the inside of the bend, generating a yaw moment, i.e. a turning motion around a vertical axis, making the car more agile while cornering. When accelerating out of the corner, the car has more traction thanks to the mechanical differential lock. Of course, to live up to the expectations placed in us of having the best brakes in the sports car segment, we also needed to completely rework the brake system and adapt it to the higher power output of the new B4 engines, these powerful high-torque engines. For the 718 Cayman, we have used the same S-brake system as on the previous model, which is larger on the front axle and also features larger brake discs. The 718 Cayman S also uses a new brake caliper and a stronger brake system from the second generation of the 911, which is also a significant improvement in comparison to its predecessor and thus enables us to achieve such excellent braking distances, excellent braking performance in every aspect, and thus live up to our claim of being the best in class. For the new 718, we made the steering ratio about 10% more direct, giving the car greater agility, spontaneity, as well as comfort when driving slowly, driving around town when parking. But it's on country roads that it really gains agility and performance. Nordschleife? Sure. Of course, it's quite a challenge for Porsche to drive around the Nürburgring Nordschleife with the new car and measure the lap time at the end of a vehicle development process. That is a good yardstick for a vehicle's overall performance. The new 718 Cayman S can complete a lap of the Nürburgring Nordschleife in just 7 minutes and 40 seconds which is an outstanding result in its vehicle segment. It is important to us with our history, with our racing history, that we keep on developing in this respect. And we know that we have a very strong tradition. And this also means that we have to react to today's world. That's precisely what sets Porsche apart. That is what allows the brand to remain iconic. To me, the Cayman is already an iconic car. For three generations, we've managed to redefine the design without losing the main features. So, the 718 Boxer and Cayman are connected to each other even more strongly now. At the same time, 
We also focused on highlighting the individual design features that are unique to the Cayman even more. In other words, the roof line is yet more precise, stretched even tighter over the driver's head. While we also took another look at the rear wings. On the Cayman, we've made the rear wings a bit flatter, so that they appear even wider when viewed directly from the rear, seen from behind. These are the aspects that distinguish the two cars. One thing is for sure, Porsche is never the widest car. That's why we pay so much attention to ensuring that we get the proportions right. In other words, we try by every possible means, with graphics and emphasizing the wings, to make the cars appear flatter. Because we don't necessarily want to just grow wider. And the 718 Cayman is an excellent example of this. In comparison to its predecessor, we tried to make it look wider, despite its actually being the same width. I like the Cayman best from behind. I love this entire area of the C-pillar and rear wings. I'm also aware that making these wings in this way is a complicated process, and it also confirms that it is actually possible to make something that looks good and that your colleagues can also manufacture it. So it was a great result for us. Now, of course, the front design of the 718 is also completely new and very purist from my point of view. We use very fine lines all over the front. If we look at the headlights from above, for instance, it has a very wide emphasis, very soft on the inside, but is still very focused and contoured nevertheless. The lower nose section and this entire front end are very precisely drawn. And, of course, we made the large air intake very functional. We were very happy to use them, because I find these functional elements give the car a sportier look than its predecessor. The air intakes are broader and extended more to the sides. Now we have a completely new angle in the front, which gives the Cayman an even more masculine image which goes very well with the rear. The 718 Cayman, or the Cayman in general, also lives a bit from the fact that this very soft design language typical of Porsche is combined with a very sharp and clearly defined framework of lines. And these lines on the inside of the wings and the front area with the front spoiler are also very sharply drawn. These are all edges with which we want to give the car a masculine feel. And yet, the Cayman remains a Porsche. Dennoch bleibt der Cayman ein Porsche. Of course, the 718 Cayman shows perfect proportions for its segment. That means a long wheelbase, a really low nose, and a very pronounced rear wing. These are characteristics that we always emphasize in the Porsche DNA. At the same time, the Cayman has special design aspects of its own, such as the extremely dynamic, sweeping front and rear wings, and of course, the large side air inlets, which call attention to the mid-engine characteristics. The air inlets are also larger because the new drive technology needs a significantly higher throughput of air. Now, this is why we made these black elements larger, more striking, and they capture a bit more of the wind. Well, the rear view is, and is so often the case with Porsche, very important for the Cayman too. Here we have a very tightly contracted passenger cabin, which makes the rear wings seem even wider. And like at the front, the wings have a very precise little edge which structures the entire surface up to the rear wheels. And we've given the car the perfect finishing touch at the back with a new badge. This element is, in my opinion, a little bit of Porsche that you can touch, a three-dimensional row of letters and if you stand a bit further away and look at the back of the car, it makes the car look significantly wider than its predecessor.
The interior design of the 718 is, in my opinion, in perfect harmony with the exterior design. Everything is even more reduced and more purist, which suits this car very well. And we can see this in the air vents in the interior, which are simply round now and even more reduced. Also, the car has a new steering wheel, inspired by the 918, and a frameless monitor on the center console is also on board, of course. Porsche started out with a four-cylinder boxer engine. Back then, in the 356, in the 550 Spider, and in the 718, of course. And hence, the name now. That was a conscious decision. The typical Porsche sound is immediately recognizable. Now, our objective was to further increase performance in comparison to its predecessor, while at the same time reducing fuel consumption. And of course, the turbo concept is ideal for this, as the increase in performance due to turbocharging simultaneously allows the number of cylinders to be reduced from six to four cylinders, further decreasing internal friction in the engine and thus cutting consumption. Fuel consumption is reduced by up to 13%. The fuel consumption of the base model is 6.9 liters per 100 kilometers, which corresponds to the savings of 0.7 liters per 100 kilometers. The Cayman S has a fuel consumption of 7.3 liters, which corresponds to a savings of 0.9 liters per 100 kilometers. The B4 is a completely new engine. It came into being together with a new engine family that includes the 3.0-liter six-cylinder boxer engine that is used in the 911 Carrera. Carrera einsetzen. Hat die besondere Herausforderung für den Cayman. A particular challenge for the Cayman was designing the B4 engine in such a way that it would fit into the space available, along with all of its components. The charge air cooling system posed a particular challenge, and we definitely aimed to make the side air inlets as they are today, without then needing to make any major alterations in the body. And for the Cayman and the Cayman S, we opted for engines of different displacements in order to achieve an optimum balance between good throttle response and maximum performance. We refer to this as right-sizing, because the higher naturally aspired torque of the 2.5-liter engine, with its special tuning, especially at the lower end, is accompanied by even better throttle response. The new B4 engine is based on the Porsche Modular Technology Kit, which also has a number of things in common with the 919 hybrid. In the Cayman S, we use the turbocharger with variable turbine geometry to achieve an optimum balance between maximum performance and optimum throttle response. This is a technology that actually originated in diesel engines and has already been established there for a long time. Until now, it's been exclusively reserved for the 911 Turbo. In the B4 engine, it is now also being used with an additional technology, namely an additional wastegate. The additional wastegate allows us to run the turbocharger at an optimum operating point at large mass flow rates. The new B4 engines in the 718 Cayman have several things in common with the 919 hybrid. Take, for example, the number of cylinders, four cylinders, the displacement, two liters, as well as the cylinder spacing of 118 millimeters, which is identical. Now, the new B4 engine is based on the Porsche modular technology kit, which also has a number of things in common with the 919 hybrid. They include direct fuel injection with a central injector position, as well as the use of variable turbine geometry for turbocharging. For the new B4 engines, we've taken the Vario Cam Plus system to the next level. We added variable cam tuning on the intake and now also on the outlet side. Over and above that, we implemented valve switching on both the inlet as well as the outlet side. The reason for this is that the adjacent cylinders have a negative impact on each other in the B4 as residual gases from one cylinder can enter the next cylinder, which would have a negative impact on torque buildup. 
Valve switching allows us to reduce this residual gas entry to a minimum, enabling us to achieve optimum torque at low engine speeds. The transmissions were adapted to the new turbo engines. On the one hand, we worked on the details in various places, such as changing the material used for the ball joint flanges and optimizing the internal lubrication of the manual transmission. Coatings were optimized here and there. We are using a new clutch for the manual transmission, and we're using a new centrifugal pendulum for two mass flywheels for both the manual transmission as well as for the PDK transmission. The Cayman and Cayman S already have their very own characteristic sound, even with the standard exhaust system. It was deliberately tuned in such a way using specific asymmetries, both in the exhaust manifold as well as in the main silencer. In addition to this, customers can also order the optional sport exhaust system, which intensifies the emotional driving experience and the sound even more. What sets us apart from the competition are, of course, the unique sound of the Boxer engine, as well as the unique high revving capability of the turbo engine of up to 7,500 RPM. Brand history plays a very important role for Porsche, as it is the foundation on which the brand Porsche stands today. We can see a lot of icons of the automobile world from the 1950s and 60s, for instance, which give us a wealth of inspiration and passion today. Two good examples are, of course, the Porsche 718 RSK and the RS60, cars which dominated motorsports at the time, which won over a thousand races and made the legend of Porsche great. Of course, these cars are a great source of inspiration for us today. One thing that is typical of Porsche is that every project used to be given a model number. That started with a model number 7 in 1931 and went on from there. The model 356 was made in 1948, and we got to 550 sometime in the 1950s. That was the legendary Spider, which was presented in 1953, and its successor followed in 1957, the 718. So that was actually nothing more than the chronological project number, which it was assigned by the Porsche engineering office. There was no name godfather like Manfred Godhart who thought something up. These model numbers were simply assigned in chronological order, absolutely pragmatically, and nobody back then could have anticipated that these numbers, like the 550, 718, or later the 911, would one day become the stuff of legend. Characteristic of the 718 is this unique combination of lightweight design, a mid-engine layout, aerodynamics and small, efficient and extremely high performance four-cylinder engines with four camshafts and extremely high revving. Some of them delivered performance of over 150 horsepower from just 1.5 liters of displacement, resulting in an ideal power-to-weight ratio. Even though the cars actually competed in the smaller displacement classes, they not only took the class victory but even took the overall victory. That is what made Porsche great. As a big fish in a small pond, we simply showed the big cars what this little car manufacturer from Stuttgart Zuffenhausen was capable of. That is simply something that has been inherent to the corporate culture at Porsche from the very beginning. The company was founded as an engineering office. Ferdinand Porsche was a person who strived to find the perfect technical solution. He didn't want to implement the most that can technically be achieved, but was always seeking the most intelligent solution. There are lots and lots of examples. With his sports cars, Porsche managed to transfer all of this into serial production. Ferry Porsche continued this tradition, and with the 718, they made a car in the 50s that really summed that up. That was a unique combination of lightweight construction, reliability, design, and efficiency first and foremost. On the racetrack, it demonstrated very impressively just how efficient the car was. These little spiders won over 1,000 races in the 50s and 60s. Spider in 
finde es toll, dass diese Historie. I think that it's great that this historical designation 718 has been rediscovered now. The 550 Spider is probably the most famous car made by Porsche in the 1950s. Its successor, the 718, got a bit forgotten, even though it was also a very successful car. It won in Le Mans, Targa Florio, the 12 Hours of Sebring, to name but a few great victories. This car gave us a great deal of inspiration because it was the 718 RS60 in particular, which was built to meet regulations that called for a car that was pretty close to the production model. That's what sets Porsche apart, this close connection between racing and production models. The four-cylinder boxer engine is something that is just a part of Porsche. It all began in 1948. In 1953 came this legendary four camshaft engine with four cylinders. Now we are continuing this tradition. I believe that this efficiency, the compactness of these cars and their performance, combined with everyday practicality, was typical of Porsche in the past and remains so in the present too.